in islam's teachings goodness takes the lead choosing what's right fulfills every need invitation to virtue invitation to virtue alhamdulillah rabbil alamin salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome back to another episode of Invitation to Virtue In today's episode, my dear viewers of Madani Channel We will continue to learn more about invitation to virtue and the fadail and the benefits one attains of inviting others towards virtue, towards goodness, towards righteousness. Before we dive into the topic at hand, let's listen to a fadila, a virtue of reciting durood upon the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. Nabi Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama is mentioned that on the day of judgment, when everyone will be in the need of intercession for entering into Jannah, at that day the person who recites Darood will be blessed with the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. And the person who sends Darood upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ receives its reward in a way that his sustenance is increased. Furthermore, sending Darood upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ is also a cause of forgiveness for sins. The recitation of Durood results in the forgiveness of the sins of the reciter. And lastly, the, the reciting Durood upon the Holy Prophet ﷺ increases the virtuous deeds in the Book of Deed. SubhanAllah. This was some of the fadail of reciting Durood upon the Blessed Prophet ﷺ. Alihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So therefore, my dear views on Madni channel, we should not shy away and come forth wholeheartedly whenever we hear the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. My dear views on Madni channel, let's start with a parable, a Madni parable in relation to invitation to virtue. A preacher, he says that. He says that he used to deliver the dars, the area dars, on a regular basis every single day. And a person who disliked the environment of Dawat Islami, the organization Dawat Islami, he lodged a complaint with the police falsely, alleging that this preacher was provoking hostility and hatred in the locality. So a person who was just doing one of the works of Dawat Islami, he's given area dars. And a person who, didn't, who disliked the organization, he lodged a complaint with the local police station that oh, this person is you know, um, provoking hostility and hatred in the locality. Now the police came and took that person down uh, to the police station. The preacher of Dawat Islami is always a preacher no matter what my dear views of Madin channel. That no matter where he is, he is always a preacher of Dawat Islami. So Alhamdulillah, therefore saying that he making individual effort, he persuaded a criminal in the police station to attend the weekly Sunnah inspiring Ijtima of Dawat Islami. And the criminal said after being released that I will certainly attend the Ijtima. Will you meet me there? The preacher replied, Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. And he also told him the meeting point in the Ijtima. Now observing the good manners and overall behavior, of the preacher Madhavius and Madhichan. The police even realized the actual matter and let the devotee of Rasul go respectfully. After the criminal was released a few months later, he reached Fezani Madina, the global Madani Markaz of Dawat Islami in Karachi, to attend the weekly Sunnah inspiring Ijtima. He listened to the speech and during the dhikr and dua, he was overwhelmed with remorse and divine fear repenting of his sins tearfully. After dua, he searched for that preacher that invited him towards the gathering. 
and that same preacher who had given him the invitation to virtue. Now reaching the meeting point which they have set beforehand, an Islamic brother informed him that the preacher had passed away last Tuesday. Listen to this, he burst into tears and said, he invited me to righteousness. He gave me invitation to virtue. I repented of my sins due to his efforts. Alas, I could not even meet him again. He has done me a great favor, making individual efforts. A devotee of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, You can no longer meet him, but you, but you can benefit him. And one of his ways is that you can travel this morning with the Sunnah inspired Madani Qafila in the company of the devotees of the Prophet Ali والسلام, for 30 days for the Isale Thawab for him. So he says, Alhamdulillah, he traveled the same day with the 30 day Madani Qafila in the company of Ashikani Rasul. And he said, Alhamdulillah, today that ex criminal who used to run pubs is a preacher of Dawud Islami. SubhanAllah, my dear views of Madani channel. We have just observed that a preacher is indeed a preacher no matter where he is. He always maintains a sunnah conforming attitude and attire. Whether he is in the street or the marketplace, at a funeral, at a wedding, in a clinic or a hospital, in a garden or a graveyard, to attend a burial. Whenever he gets the chance, he gifts people with madani pearls of calling towards righteousness, accumulating the wealth of reward for him. This above Madani parable, my dear views of Madani channel, shows that this deceased devotee of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a very enthusiastic preacher. When someone brought him to the police station oppressively, he engaged himself in a Madani work even there, inspired an ex-owner of a pub to repent and become a preacher of Dawud Islami and then passed away. We do dua in the court of Allah wa Taala. May Allah Jalla have mercy upon this deceased preacher, a devotee of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Amin. Bijahin Nabijil Amin. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu taala ala Muhammad. My dear viewers of Madni Channel, the renowned and revered Rasul sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam said that should I not tell you about the people who are neither anbiya, they are not prophets. No shuhada, no martyrs, but even the Anbiya, even the Prophets and the martyrs will envy them seeing their status on the Day of Judgment. Those people is mentioned that those people will be raised on Noor made members, so members made of Noor, that's how they will be raised on the Day of Judgment. Who are these? So these are the people who make the bondmen of Allah Taala the beloveds of Allah Azza wa Jalla and walk on earth, on this earth, advising people, invitation to virtue. It was asked, how do they make people beloveds of Allah wa Ta'ala? He sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, said, they ask people to do things Allah wa Ta'ala likes and prevent them from things Allah wa Ta'ala dislikes. Hence, when people follow them, Allah wa Ta'ala will make them his beloved. Subhanallah, but he views the money channel from this narration. Have you seen how great the status of those who promote invitation to virtue? This is the entire moral of our program, my dear views of Madni channel, invitation to virtue, the fadail, the virtue of inviting people towards virtue, towards righteousness. That even on the day of judgment, even the Anbiya, Ali Musalatu Salam, and the martyrs, the Shuhada will envy them seeing the, seeing the divine bounty and benevolence upon them. Here envy, my dear views of Madni channel, implies that Anbiya Ali Salatu Salam and the martyrs will get very delighted to see their status and will praise and appreciate them. And it also means that if Anbiya Ali Salatu Salam and the martyrs had envied anyone, they would have envied these people. The reason for this greatness and glory is that they make the people beloved of Allah wa Taala, by making them practicing Muslims, calling them towards virtue, invitation to virtue, and preventing them from evils. When they make others beloved of Allah Jalla, why they themselves would not be beloved of Allah wa Taala? So therefore, my dear, 
views on Madni channel. There are many fadail of invitation to virtue. Even our pious predecessors, my dear views on Madni channel, our pious predecessors, rahimahumullah ta'ala, would not miss any opportunity of reaping the reward of calling towards righteousness, invitation to virtue. This is something that we should take on board as well, my dear views on Madni channel. We have, for example, in your locality, you have a institute of Dawat Islami, a Fazane Madina, or an institute of Dawat Islami where the dini works of Dawat Islami take place. Alhamdulillah, in many various locations on Wednesdays, some on Thursdays, some on the weekend, uh, the invitation to virtue get, takes place. And if you are aware of this but not attending or not joining uh, this short invitation to virtue, then we should ask ourselves that. Uh, how much reward are we letting go of? How much reward we can actually attain, but we, out of laziness, out of, you know, or the weather is a bit upset today, you know, we don't want to do anything. But look how much reward we are missing out on my views on Badni channel. Whereas our pious predecessors, they would not miss any opportunity of reaping the reward of invitation to virtue. Nor would they get over owed by anyone in this matter. There's a parable in this context that it was it mentioned that while going somewhere along with his pupils, Sayyiduna Hassan Basri rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he saw a very wealthy man and he was surrounded by his slaves. Moving somewhere on a horse with pomp and ceremony, he rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, asked the wealthy man where he was going. He replied that he was going to the royal court. Making individual efforts, he rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, said, O oh brother, you have worn a fancy and perfumed dress and have adorned your outer self in every possible way. You have certain done all of this to avoid embarrassment in the royal court, despite knowing that the king of the fleeting world and his courtiers are powerless human beings like you. Just think, on the day of judgment, you will be presented to Allah, before Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. The Anbiya and Awliya rahimahumullah of Allah Azza wa Jalla will also be there. Have you adorned your inner self before being presented on the Day of Judgment? So you adorned your outer self, but the question was, have you actually adorned your inner self? Will you go there with the filth of sins and smell of evils? The wealthy man listened to this advice very attentively. Sayyidina Hassan Basri rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi then asked the wealthy man, have you ever overburdened your horse? He replied in the negative. Sayyidina Hassan Basri rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali continued, You have pity on your horse, but you have no pity upon your feeble body. You are continually placing the burden of sins on it. Just think, if you spend your life in the same sinful way, what will happen after your death? The wealthy man, highly impressed by the invitation to virtue, and the individual effort made by Sayyidina Hassan Basri rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he got off his horse, became a disciple of his, and a pious bondman of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Madi views of Madni channel. We have learned various parables in here. Have you seen that the friends of Allah azza wa jalla would reform the wealthy and would advise them bluntly rather than flatter and get around them? So this is something that we can t take on board when we are inviting invitation, when we are giving invitation to virtue. Don't flatter people, don't praise them more than they deserve because once you praise them and then once then you uh, correct them, then you know, this might not work in your favor, especially when it's a wealthy person, especially when it's a famous person. So this, our awliya, our pious people of Allah, wa ta'ala, this was not their way. And it's mentioned that the one who flatters the wealthy is actually greedy for the despicable wealth of the world. The friends of Allah Taala have the madni wealth of contentment. All they want is the mercy of Allah Taala, not the temporary wealth of the rich. Remember my DVs on Madni channel, it is strictly pro uh, forbidden to show humility to the wealthy due to their wealth. It is stated that the one who is humble with a wealthy person, because of his wealth, two-thirds of his deen, i.e. religion, goes away. So therefore, my dear views on Mandi channel, we should learn a lesson from the parable that has been mentioned. And another lesson that this contains, this parable, is for those who wear handsome and eye-catching clothes, maintaining a good-looking appearance when going to meet some ruler, minister, 
an officer, a high level of authority, but pay no attention to the enhancement of their appearance before presenting in the court of Allah Taala. Just this state, my dear views and manish, and I'll pause here for a second. This state can be seen in today's society. How those that go to work in the morning, for example, those to have a nine to five job, they wake up seven o'clock, eight o'clock. You know, get themselves ready. Those that wear, you know, blazers, tie. You know, they make sure their hair's done properly. You know, appearance is good. They go to work like that. But when they get a chance to pray, for example, Fajr Salah, look at the clothes that they read Fajr Salah. In. The Fajr Salah clothes. Look, like you can observe the clothing that they read Fajr Salah. In. Especially if you go to the Masajid in Jamaat, many people I have observed that they attend the Jamaat. With the night clothes that they sleep in, nineties is cold, and they're wearing you know like one full dress and covered head. What you sleep in the night clothes, they're wearing that and going to the court of Allah But but similarly, when is the job time, they won't wear that. You know they'll you know they'll make sure they perfume, they look good, and this is happening in our society, my dear viewers and channel. One should avoid this, my dear viewers and money channel. And when we go to meet an important person. Or a place where a lot of people will be seeing us, and what we do generally is we make ourselves look handsome and attractive by putting on neat, clean clothes, turban, shawl, by combing our hair, etc. But with the wrong intention, of course. But at the time of salah, when we are present in the court of our Creator Azza wa Jalla, we do not improve our appearance. One should at least wear the dress before attending the masjid. Which he wears before he goes to meet a VIP, very important person or high-ranking person. Now, about adopting a good appearance for attending the masjid, it is stated in Ayah 31 of Surah Al-A'raf, Part 8: "Khuzu zinatakum عند كل مسجد." Adorn yourselves when you go to the masjid. Alama Maulana Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Muradabadi, Rahmatullahi Taala Ali, has stated: This implies a good-looking dress. According to another commentary. It implies to combing the hair and applying fragrance. The Sunnah is to adopt good-looking appearance before offering salah, because salah contains supplication to Allah Tabarak wa Taala. So it is mustahab to adopt appearance and to apply fragrance for salah. A hadith of the Prophet sallallahu taala, alihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barak wa lama stated in the book of Sahih Muslim Sharif. He says that during the pre-Islamic era of ignorance, where it was lawlessness. A lot of things used to happen at the time of ignorance, in which that there are many things to be said. But when the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam came, uh, they got rid of a lot of things that used to be used to happen back then. A hadith stated in the book of Sahih Muslim says that during the pre-Islamic era of ignorance, men during the days and women at nights nice would perform tawaf naked, and the above ayah contains the commandment. Of covering the sitter, the private organs, and wearing clothes, it also proves that the sitter aurat is wajib during salah, tawaf, and all occasions. I would like to mention before we end our program, our silsila today, regarding some madni pers of and rulings of clothing during salah with the intention of invitation to virtue. It says that wearing a kurta, a long full sleeve shirt, pajamas. Or tahban, a piece of shawl wrapped around the lower part of the body during salah invalidates the salah. For example, you're in salah and you're trying to put on your kurta, pyjama, tahban. So, whilst in salah you do this, this will invalidate the salah. Undressing the sitter, the private organs from the navel, including the knee, all this area between, if this it gets uncovered and in the same condition, offering any act of salah or passing of as much as. The time it says Subhanallah to be uttered thrice, it also invalidate the salah. Similarly, some of the rules have been mentioned. Is sadal is makruh tahrimi. This implies to a hanging cloth, for example, keeping a shawl or handkerchief handkerchief on the head or the shoulder in such a way both of its ends are hanging. However, if one end is on the shoulder and the other end end is hanging, there is no harm in it. These days, it says that some people keep a handkerchief on one shoulder, with its one 
end hanging on the back and the other on the stomach offering salah in this condition is also makruwe tahrimi so my dear views of money channel we have heard some madni pearls in regards to an uh, invitation to virtue and the uh, fadail in regards to this as well and we should ponder my dear views of money channel that how much reward we are missing out on that invitation to virtue is such a great act such a great act full of reward it's only reward you invite someone and he doesn't come you invite someone he doesn't attend for example the weekly gathering you invite someone towards good and he doesn't do what you ask him to do you will still be rewarded this is the virtue you will still be rewarded for your efforts and if he does attend he will get rewarded but you will also get the same reward that he is getting because you are the one who invited him you are the one that invited him my dear views of money channel so this is something that we should ponder upon as well that so much opportunity that we get in our daily lives my dear views of money channel for example another way that we can do invitation to virtue is you go to work for example you have muslim colleagues and instead of saying hello hi greet him with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh if they say hello invitation to virtue that the one who starts with salam the virtue mentioned that fadila and the one who says full assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh gets good deeds you know this is invitation to virtue adopt this environment and inshallah azza you will see how your life how the life of people around you your brothers your sisters your colleagues your surroundings your own environment will change once you adopt the habit of invitation to virtue amin bijahi nabiy al amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in islam's teachings goodness takes the lead choosing what's right fulfills every need invitation to virtue Invitation to a true